uh, my dear colleagues. Uh, uh, first of all, let me take the opportunity to thank uh, my local hosts, especially Professor Fujiwara, who unfortunately is not uh, on the scene, uh, for inviting me um, to give this uh, closing keynote talk uh, as the conference draws to a conclusion. Um, today, I would like to share uh, some recent findings with you uh, on a very important question. That is, how should we Sino-Tibetanists uh, identify subgroups in whatever uh, language uh, or languages we are studying? Uh, the a specific topic is the uh, immensely complicated Tibetic uh, family, which my colleague uh, Nicolas Tuonado uh, aptly uh, compared to uh, to the uh, to the Romance Romance languages. Uh, in terms of internal diversity and number of distinct languages. Okay, uh, this is a case study uh, of an area, uh, a Kuruchu in written Tibetan, or uh, Chuche in Nando Tibetan. That's uh, one of the uh, 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 counties within the Aba uh, prefecture in northern Sichuan. Okay, uh, I'll begin by introducing you to the languages spoken in this uh, county. Uh, this county is called, uh, in Chinese, Heishui, black water. And the Tibetan word, uh, as you know, uh, means uh, cast iron uh, water. <clears throat> the water doesn't look so black to me, but they call it <laughs> that anyway. Uh, okay, uh, in this county, three ind indigenous uh, Sino Tibetan language, language groups are represented. Uh, the first one of them is uh, Rima, uh, uh, or uh, 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 the, auto, uh, the external name uh, is Chang, which is not in entirely uh, adequate, uh, and Jarong and Tibetic. Okay, uh, I'll show these uh, language groups on the map uh, for you. Uh, the, the red color or pink color area is the Rma speaking area, uh, uh, where uh, at least three or even four distinct uh, languages uh, are represented. The most prominent one is, of course, uh, Northwestern Rma, uh, including uh, Mao, the, the uh, prestigious Mao dialect. The, um, the yellow color area spoken in three villages uh, are the, uh, uh, the Jarong uh, languages. Uh, representing uh, two distinct dialects of uh, Eastern or Situ Jarong. And yet, as you can see here, to the north and west, uh, the green area, the green spots, are the, uh, uh, are the areas where the Tibetic languages, or to be conservative, I should say, lects, are uh, spoken. Okay, the Tibetic languages in, in Krochu. According to the Gazetteer of Heishui County, uh, they make the sweeping claim that the Tibetan speeches within the county are dialects of Amdo period. Okay, but this is uh, their xianzhi or uh, Gazetteer. <clears throat> but this is grossly misleading. If you believe them, then you would uh, think that this is, okay, just another Amdo area, just like Hongyuan or Songpan. But that's not right. Okay, over the years, our continued documentation endeavors have uncovered as many as seven distinct, previously unknown Tibetic clusters. These are from, from west uh, toward the uh, north, northeast, are Saste, Taku, Roto, Eastern Chuna, Southern Matsa, Take, and Tsagi, uh, pronounced in the, lo in the local pronunciation. Okay, so obviously this is a very diverse, linguistically very diverse uh, area. So uh, two follow-up research questions naturally suggest themselves. First, what are the linguistic positions of these Tibetic varieties if, if I don't agree that they are all Ando? Uh, what are my opinions? Okay, how are they related to, to each other? Remember that there, there, there are seven of them, right? How are they related to each other? And to Tibetic languages spoken beyond the Heishui County borders. 
Uh, before I proceed, uh, I would like to say a few words about subgrouping methodology. I, I hope, I, I wish I didn't have to do this, but apparently in the case of Tibetic languages, uh, we, we, we must remind uh, scholars that the, this is what the uh, orthodox uh, methodology requires us to do. Okay? Uh, historical linguists unanimously agree that language subgrouping is determined solely or only by shared innovations in phonology and morphology and to a lesser extent lexicon because these are evidence that members of a putative subgroup share a period of common history. But that statement uh, must come with two uh, qualifications or provisos. First, only aberrant, abnormal, typologically uncommon shared innovations are useful for subgrouping. Because frequently attested or natural sound changes may well have arisen independently in languages or dialects belonging to different phylogenetic clades. Okay, the second qualification, which is uh, advising us uh, what would be uh, the way to go, to go uh, by default. Uh, this methodological guideline has been nicely captured or formulated by Robert Blust. He says, at the outset, every language can be regarded as a primary branch of the family to which it belongs. Okay, that's the default treatment. Put it at the highest level. <clears throat> when evidence of ESI or exclusively shared innovation is found for combining it with another language or languages, it is then assigned to a, sub -node, a subordinate node in the tree. Conversely, if you cannot find the evidence, if no evidence for ESI is found for assigning the target language to a subordinate node within a tree, that language must be assigned directly to the highest node, you know, like uh, hangers on a clothesline at the very, very top. Okay, uh, in view of the foregoing principles, uh, if one encounters an unstudied Tibetan variety somewhere in the world, one must resist the temptation to pigeonhole it rashly into a poorly defined dialect, Amdor, Kams, or whatever, Western or whatever, on convenient but shaky criteria. Instead, one should leave it unclassified under Tibetic at the highest level until a closer affinity with a recognized subgroup can be demonstrated. Okay, uh, with that, uh, uh, methodological reminders in mind, uh, the goals of this study uh, are first to discuss a set of striking phonological, lexical, and morphosyntactic developments in the in one of the seven uh, uh, Tibetic lects, uh, Eastern Chuna. Th th that's the local pronunciation, Ch Ch Chunak, or black water, okay? But they say Chuna, uh, or EC cluster, which supports uh, setting it up as a distinct Tibetic language. Uh, second goal, identify EC's probable next of kin in the Krochu County by examining how these innovative features are shared with neighboring lects. Okay, uh, uh, what, what uh, the target language of this study, Eastern Chuna, uh, where is it spoken? It is spoken only in two villages. One is called uh, Chongzhang, uh, written Tibetan T-S-I-R-I, but pronounced Chongzhang, or Zhi'er in Chinese. The other one is Zhengentang, or Zhengetang, in the local pronunciation. Two villages to the left of the Lumergi, or Maragai River, in Chuna, or Qinglang Township. The two, two village uh, dialects are broadly similar, but differ in numerous respects. Okay, a word about, their, uh, about the uh, sociolinguistic back backdrop of the area. The linguistic scene in Chunak Township is dominated by Northwestern Rma. That is the dominant uh, form of uh, Chang or Rma in the, in the Blackwater County, Heishui County. Six out of 11 villages of the township, even one hamlet in the Zengatang village is Rma speaking. So bilingualism is the norm here. Not surprisingly, Rma has exerted strong influence on Eastern Chuna. All right, uh, we're ready to, uh, to, to uh, examine the evidence. 
distinctive vocabulary. An immediately notable feature of EC is the presence of certain strange looking items in its core vocabulary. Some of these are readily recognized as Rma, long words. For example, the word for, ta for talking or a bovid animal, I'm, I, I'm sure you know what, what I'm referring to. Uh, this animal is called uh, in, in in this Tibetan language. Uh, but it's obviously a, a long word from northwestern Chang, Rma. Uh, their word is Zhu. It's very similar in pronunciation. But others appear to be innovative forms or substratal forms, uh, I cannot decide yet, of elusive origins. So for those of, uh, for those of you who are specialists of Tibetan, uh, these uh, words should look very strange. OK, uh, from top down. The word for cloud uh, in, in most uh, Tibetic languages would be uh, reflexes of the old Tibetan word spring, right? Oh, but in, but in uh, Zhonghua, it's shongpe, completely unrelated. The word for stomach, uh, old Tibetan poba, is songka. The word for snot is snops, uh, snops in old Tibetan, right? It's khtin. Uh, the word for bamboo, uh, Old Tibetan smyukma, is shang. Uh, the word for grass, uh, Old Tibetan sta, is sh. This is not a reflex, despite the uh, apparent similarity. Be able, uh, Old Tibetan tu, right, uh, is li. Uh, the word for heart, uh, old, uh, old Tibetan singing, right, is zhenbe. Uh, they're all different words. Uh, and uh, by the way, they are not uh, Chang words. Uh, because, uh, for example, the, the Chang word for cloud is zdom, from zdom, pronounced zdom. The word for stomach in, in Chang is stha, right? Snot is stay, bamboo is spa, and so on. Biebo is ti. So these are, these are not long words from from the locally dominant language Chang. Uh, 